This is a Channel 5 News special report. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Galen Savannas, along with Betty Cross. We're on South Duff Avenue reporting live in Ames, where man and nature have been slugging it out all night and through most of the morning. As you can see behind us, there's quite a bit of flooding going on here, and right now trucks are moving back and forth through the area trying to uh, hold off the flood waters. It's about halfway up on a lot of the buildings, and what's keeping it out of some of those buildings, it's a tremendous volunteer effort. Hundreds and hundreds of Ames people have come out to try to help save some of the, these buildings and minimize damage. That's an important story, and we'll get to it in just a few minutes. First of all, we want to give you sort of an overview of everything that's going on in Ames. Uh, the Squaw Creek, which runs actually through Ames, normally crests at seven feet. Right now, it has more than doubled that. It is a record 15.31 feet. That happened at 11.30 this morning, so you can see the uh, Squaw Creek is causing quite a bit of damage here. Also, the Skunk River north of the Ames, uh, the river has risen above nine feet above the flood stage, and it's going to crest at record 15 feet on Monday. So the worst, perhaps, is not over here yet. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the history of flooding in Ames, uh, officials say this is the worst flooding we have had in 44 years. I'm going to take that back since 1944. Now, a little earlier this morning, volunteers helped evacuate about 49 elderly residents from the Riverside Manor Community Center over on South Forest. They moved them to other um, elderly care facilities in the area around here as the waters threatened. And uh, they had quite a chore of getting the people out, but moving the people was only part of the effort. that the residents are probably going to be out of the facility at least 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, I don't know. It's, Does that make it difficult to care for some of these people? Definitely, yeah. yeah. We, we have, uh, uh, you know, taken all of our records and all the medications have went with the uh, patients. Uh, we transported the majority of them over to North Grand Care Center, uh, it's Grand Ave known as Grand Avenue Care Center now and uh, the rest of the residents will be going over to Ledges Manor in Boone. Now, Riverside Manor is not the only thing that's going to be closed. Ames has closed several streets uh, as of 1 o'clock today because of the high waters. First of all, South Duff, as you can see behind us, is closed. Uh, Stained Road is closed, also over by ISU. South 4th, South 5th, Walnut Street, South Russell, Center Street to Lincoln Way, Elwood Drive, and Lincoln Way from Elwood Drive to Grand Avenue. So quite a few of the, uh, the streets here, Ames is pretty much cut off in a lot of ways if you're trying to get around town. That's right. You know, we talked about the volunteer effort just a few moments ago. As we said, hundreds and hundreds of people are giving up their time on this Father's Day to come out and try to minimize the damage to businesses. Now, one of the men who's been out here since 1030 this morning, Ron Crawl, a track coach at Ames Middle School. You've been out here since 1030. What have you seen when you, when you, since you've been here? Well, we've seen a lot of camaraderie. Uh, we started out with approximately 30 people here working at 1030 when the call went out, and there are probably 250 or so up there now working. Now, you started at Save You More. What happened then? <laughs> it took us about 10 minutes to realize that the water was coming a lot faster than we could shovel the sand. So they backed out four blocks or so and started up again. You can certainly see that. If you look past to Save You More is a little way down the road. I bet you'd be waist high in water if you were trying to sand there now, wouldn't you? You bet. You bet. Now, you're up at Snyder Drugs, and you need some more help, don't you? I think the people that are there, I know I am a little bit uh, tired after four hours of work. So if people have got a uh, good shovel, a good back, a pair of gloves, and a willingness to work hard. Uh, come on down to Snyder Drug and we can use you. That's right. And we also need more garbage bags because the only way they can protect these businesses, a lot of them are covered with sandbags over here. The only way we can keep that up is if we have more garbage bags, more manpower, more shovels, and of course gloves to protect the hands, right? Yes, especially the bags. Those have been a real problem all day. So uh, any container we can use, we'll take it. They certainly will. Now, of course, things are still looking pretty bad here. Some of the uh, creeks and rivers haven't even crested in the Ames area. But in Des Moines, there's a little bit of a different story. In Des Moines and West Des Moines, the flood situation is easing this afternoon. The Raccoon River crested early this morning six feet above flood stage. Floor Drive is underwater and close to all traffic, at least of the vehicle type. Now, Waterworks employees had to use boats to get to work this morning. Des Moines police say they expect floor to be closed at least until Wednesday. And while that is good news for Des Moines, of course, Galen, here in Ames, is still a, a bad situation, and we need volunteers and help to help ease the situation. That's right. As we're standing here, the uh, trucks are coming down from Snyder Drugs, which is uphill from here, and they're actually driving through this flooded area. You can see people actually going through it, too, and they're taking the sandbags onto the other side of this flooded out area, and they're trying to sandbag, and we can look over there, uh, as, as you said, over at the Phillips 66 here, and they have really just set up a, they have really just set up a human barricade as to the... Uh, as to the waters coming up, and it's sort of a wait-and-see attitude, as we said, but 
The floodwaters have not crested yet. They're expecting that to flood uh, the crest a little bit later on this evening. So just putting up the sandbags here is not a guarantee that things are going to be all right. This is once again, as I said, just man and nature slugging it out. Who's going to who's going to win out in the long run? It may be a matter of perseverance. So uh, we want to remind everybody that we're going to have a special report at five o'clock today. We'll once again check in with the situation here, also the situation in Des Moines and West Des Moines, and give you an overview of all the things that are going on in central Iowa when it comes to flooding. And one more reminder, if you've got a strong back, a shovel and a pair of gloves, come on out and help us here in Ames. I know the business people would really appreciate it. For now, though, reporting live from Duff Avenue, I'm Betty Cross with Galen Savannas. This has been a Channel 5 News special report. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. This is a Channel 5 News special report. Last year, Iowans were praying for rain. This year, we're praying for it to stop. Central Iowa is underwater and residents are struggling to stay afloat. This is Ames from the air about three hours ago. Farmland and city streets turned into wading pools, even lakes. It's the worst flooding in Ames in at least 40 years. Good afternoon, I'm Gail Nye. Rampaging floodwaters from Squaw Creek and the Skunk River have turned Ames into an island. Heavy rains overnight have left the city underwater and under siege. Let's go live to Galen Savannas for the latest. Galen, just unbelievable the amount of water out there. It certainly is, Gail. As you can see behind me, South Dove Avenue could probably be renamed South Squaw Avenue because it is the Squaw Creek about 200 yards from here that has gone over its banks and cut a path right through town. Now, the creek's normal flood stage is seven feet, but at this morning at 1130, it was twice as deep. Evacuate your vehicles immediately. Prepare for record high water. For most of the morning, Ames police tried to stay a step ahead of the rising waters. Just under two and a half inches of rain fell last night, but it came down so fast on already soaked ground, there was no place for it to run. The Skunk River north of Ames is already above the nine-foot flood stage. It's expected to crest at a record 15 feet tomorrow. For some residents, it's a chance to spend the weekend at the lake without ever leaving town. I'm trying to get into this movie theater over here, and. Uh... We don't seem to be having much luck. But it was no laughing matter at the Riverside Manor Community Center. Volunteers pitched in to move 49 elderly residents out of harm's way. We never expected this. I mean, it just, it just came all of a sudden, boom, it was here and it was too late. Homes along South 4th and South 5th were evacuated. Some tried in vain to hold the line, but water cascaded down basement stairs. Businesses along South Duff refuse to give up. Sandbags are the only line of defense. If the sandbags hold the water out, it could probably stand another three or four inches of water, you know, but uh, it just depends on how well the sandbags are going to work. And throughout the day, there have been volunteers, hundreds of volunteers who've shoveled and filled and stacked, some to the point of exhaustion, many of them giving up Father's Day. I got a lot of other Father's Day, and there's other people down here that need help, so that's what we're out here doing. And there is still a need for even more volunteers. Uh, some of these people have been working straight through since this morning. Even if you're not able to take up a shovel and relieve some of the workers here, you can help in other ways. The city ran out of their regular sandbags early this morning at 11 o'clock this morning. Now they've turned to garbage bags. So if you could come out and bring some garbage bags or even some refreshments for the people who've been working without meals throughout the day, that is also greatly appreciated. Now there are some people out here who are doing nothing to help the situation. In fact, they could be contributing to the problem. Joining me now is the Ames Police Chief, uh, Dennis Ballantyne and Captain Ballantyne. Chief Valentine, let me ask you first of all, are you having a problem with people coming through and sightseeing and just standing around? Well, anytime you have a situation like this, you end up with a lot of sightseers, and they're a problem for traffic. But what gets scary here is you get a lot of people that just try to walk through the flood area. There are manhole covers that are blown off, so they can step into those. There's a fairly strong current. Uh, back in the early 70s, the last big flood we had, we had a young man drown in these kind of waters. So uh, I, I would just encourage people to keep their young people out of here and, and not think it's just a great sightseeing event that they can wander through because it can be very, very dangerous. Now, a young girl who died in Iowa yesterday was out waiting when she slipped and got caught in a drainage, uh, drain sewer. Is that the kind of thing you're worried about today? Absolutely. We Most of the uh, the uh, manhole covers in this area have blown off, so you could be walking along and step in a heck of a hole and be and drown. Uh, it, it's just plain stupidity to be out here walking around in it. Have you been able to get a handle on how much damage you have in Ames yet? 
Well, of course, it'll be a long time before we get the dollar amount, but we've lost a lot of businesses in this area have had a great deal of a damage. Uh, we've got some homes over in Russell, South Russell area that uh, are flooded out, a nursing home that uh, received quite a bit of damage. Uh, so I'm sure it's going to run into the thousands and thousands, if not millions of dollars, but it'll be a long time before we have that. Figure. Okay, thank you very much. Chief Dennis Ballantyne of the Ames Police Department. Of course, uh, the uh, floodwaters are still circulating down here on South Duff. As we said, the uh, Squaw Creek has crested, but the Skunk River has not. So we'll be continuing to monitor the situation, and we'll have more for you tonight at 10 o'clock. Reporting live from South Duff Avenue, I'm Galen Savannah, Channel 5 News. Some good advice if you're bent upon sightseeing, bring garbage bags and lend a hand. That's right. Thank you, Galen. Well, the floodwaters have made it impossible to get from here to there in Ames. At least a dozen roads are closed, among them South Duff, South 4th, South 5th, South Russell, Elwood Drive, and Lincoln Way from Elwood Drive to Grand Avenue. It seems somehow ironic that we're battling floodwaters under blue skies and bright sunshine, and yet those are the very weapons that will help win the fight. Don Novak is live in the Weather Center with some good news for the waterlog. Don, not a cloud in the sky all day. Is it going to last? It will indeed. In fact, we're going to have about a day and a half, two days at least, with uh, some nice drying out conditions. I would like to uh, reemphasize what uh, Police Chief uh, Ballantyne had said about walking out there is just crazy because it could be very dangerous. And that's the case with any flooding situations. You don't want to be walking across uh, flooded streets and so forth. Bridges, uh, the underpasses could be starting to wash away as well. It can be a very, very dangerous situation, and uh, the number of deaths so far has been very, very limited, but uh, we'd like to keep it that way, and that'll help if people just stay where they are. And if they want to do some sightseeing, what better way than watch the video that we're showing on TV, first-hand pictures. As far as what's going on right now, the Squaw Creek crested at a record uh, flood stage this morning at 11.30. By 1.30, it was down just a little bit, and the hope is that it will continue to fall. Also, some of the other rivers that are uh, starting to crest here and expecting record floods along them. Near Oskaloosa on the South Skunk River, a record crest of 23 feet will occur on Wednesday. On the Skunk River north of Ames, expecting a record crest of 15 feet on Monday, tomorrow. So we still have some more flooding to go through as far as Ames is concerned. And there's a number of other flood uh, conditions that will be occurring. Those are the record ones. The good news is, is that on the satellite picture is telling the whole story. All the activity is now blowing up to the east of us. You can see a little bit of a lighter shaded gray area moving eastward through Iowa. That's the dry line. That's where the frontal system is working its way through. Northern Illinois is a couple of puffs of white clouds starting to show up there. Tornado watch is posted for Wisconsin, Illinois, portions of northeastern Missouri. The activity will blow up to our east for the rest of today and tonight and continue moving off to the east. Now what's causing all the big problems? There's the rainfall amounts. So this is a two-day storm total. Everybody in the state had at least one to two inch rainfall amounts and a big heavy band of five to six to as much as seven inches from the uh, Des Moines area, Van Meter area, extending off toward the east uh, to the southeast of Cedar Rapids. Tipton had the most with over seven inches of rain. And all this rain now is taking the slow process of draining out through the rivers and creeks and that's what we're going to be watching. But the weather itself is nice and quiet. It's going to stay that way. I don't think we're going to see any more problems tonight, tomorrow, or tomorrow night. And then just an outside chance of a few more showers moving into the uh, weather forecast on Tuesday, but nothing like we had over the weekend. So enjoy the quiet weather, and let's hope that we can leave these rivers go on down where they belong now and uh, get back to normal life. Gail, back to you. Thank you, Don. That comes as good news. The raccoon and Des Moines rivers continue to wreak havoc in Des Moines. The situation has eased a bit, but there are still a lot of problems. Stuart Maddox joins us live from Fleur Drive, which has almost become Fleur Lake, I understand, Stuart. Yeah, or Fleur Falls, as uh, Galen might put it, uh, compared to what you see up there in Ames. Actually, this is what Fleur Avenue has looked like for almost a day now, and it's going to continue to do that for some time. But in the last few hours, the water level has crested almost seven feet above the flood stage. It's going to crest once again tonight, and police say the water is going to stay this high at least until Tuesday. Now, the water extends from the side where we are now all the way down to Gray's Lake, several hundred yards away, and it's all flowing east, washing over the street. Waterworks across the street on the west side is a lake. Workers are being transported by boat to the water plant, and the only thing that's keeping the plant from flooding is a dike made of sandbags. This is all from the Raccoon River. It has crested at 19 feet and has remained that high all day. Flood stage for this area is about 12 feet. The National Weather Service has told police they will likely have to keep Fleur closed until at least Tuesday, possibly even later, but that will, will have to 
have to wait and see. Now, the Raccoon River isn't the only one, only river, rather, that's on the rise. We had a, a potentially tragic situation over on Four Mile Creek early this afternoon. Police all day have been trying to keep people out of high water, and if this doesn't convince you to stay out of the high water, I don't think anything will. What happened was two young men, who they jumped off the eastern bridge over the creek to take a swim. That was about 1 o'clock. The water was too strong, and they couldn't wait out. Police arrived sometime later after one. Six members of their tactical unit went into the water to attempt to pull the men out. Uh, finally, about 300 yards downstream, they were able to hear the yells, cries for help from the two boys and, and were able to rescue them. And both those boys were able to uh, wait out virtually on their own and actually walk away from that accident safely. But please be careful when you're trying to go near these water spots. Don't go in high water, as the police have recommended. Now, back here along the Raccoon River, actually upstream, in West Des Moines, up several miles from here. That is where the worst damage has taken place as far as properties go. And right now, as we speak, the water is cresting again. It has been expected to all afternoon. Right now, or rather earlier in the day, it was cresting at uh, 38 and a half feet. That was about four o'clock in the morning. Now it's at 39 feet, but that is still three feet below the levee that protects Valley Junction. And officials there don't expect the water to spill over that levee onto Fifth Street. But as you can see from this video, thousands of sag sandbags rather line the streets. We feel very confident right now that it's not going to get much higher. We're, the dikes are prepared for it, and we believe we're ready for anything that's going to come now. And again, water in the suburbs is cresting at this hour. And here in Fleur, uh, on Fleur Drive, rather, you can see how bad that it is. Uh, at 10, we will update you on the driving conditions for your drive to work tomorrow morning, what streets will be blocked off here in the downtown area. And we'll have a look at uh, how cleanup is going in West Des Moines. Reporting live from Fleur Drive, Stuart Maddox, Channel 5 News. Tempting as it may be to uh, go for a nice swim on a hot day, stay out of the water. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Stuart. It was touch and go in West Des Moines early this morning as folks were preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. Alan Erlis and Clyde Rails spent the night in West Des Moines watching and waiting. Volunteers lent a helping hand early this morning to keep the flooding in West Des Moines from getting even worse. With floodwaters rising on the Raccoon River, sandbagging became a relay race against time, a race authorities felt they were losing. No, Running short on yeah, people, I think a lot of people got disheartened after that last rain. The National Guard didn't have much time to rest either, patrolling West Des Moines streets for looters. Well, there's three of them now. They're carrying bags. A little after 2 in the morning, the looters were the only ones carrying bags. Authorities were concerned about volunteer safety because of a lot of lightning and sent them home before all the sandbagging was finished. But by daybreak, the precaution hundreds of volunteers worked so hard at turned out to be more than enough. West Des Moines police kept a close There's eye on the Raccoon eight. River. Authorities say it crested around 4.30, and by 5.30, the floodwaters were already receding. The river has dropped about two inches in the last hour. Uh, we had a high of 38 and a half feet. But with saturated soil feeding an already swollen river, officials say any more rain will make it swell again. In West Des Moines, Alan Erlis, Channel 5 News. The Red Cross is continuing to help Des Moines and West Des Moines residents flooded out of their homes. An evacuation center has been set up at the Plymouth Congregational Church at 4126 Ingersoll. Dozens of people have taken advantage of the offer. Give them a call if you need some help. In Ames, people flooded out of their homes are going to the Ames Middle School on State Street. It'll be open this evening for anyone needing a place to stay. We, of course, will be updating you on the changing levels throughout the evening. Tonight at 10, the rest of the day's news as well. East Germany's parliament on the verge of unification. Today, lawmakers held an unusual session, one that nearly shifted a German merger move into overdrive. Freed activist Nelson Mandela is in Canada to kick off a two-week North American visit. We'll tell you what his goal is. That plus the joys of Father's Day, besides the tie. Again, we'll keep you updated throughout the evening on flood conditions. Thanks for joining us. This has been a Channel 5 News special report. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. This is a Channel 5 News special report.
Good afternoon, I'm Gail Nye with a Channel 5 special report. It's perhaps the worst flooding we've seen in years. The state of Iowa under a flash flood watch, the Raccoon River a flash flood warning. Already the river has crested in the Van Meter area nine feet above the flood stage, the highest levels we've seen since 1958 near record crests all the way into Des Moines. Pauletta Longo is standing by live in Clive to tell us how levels are looking there. Pauletta? Well, Gail, as you mentioned, we are in Clive here, just off of 86th Street. University is just a little bit behind us. And as you can see here, we have flooding here on the 86th Street, uh, just around the 86th Street Bridge. Uh, it's been like that most of the day. Uh, University is closed between 73rd Street and 86th Street, as it has been most of the day. And the situation uh, really is getting a touch better just because mainly it stopped raining. But it's sprinkling again here today, so of course officials are a little concerned about that. Joining me live now is Clive Mayor Gene Maddox to explain a little bit about how things are going. Uh, Mayor, first of all, thank you for joining us and taking some time out of what has been a very busy day for you. How do things look at this point? Things look a lot better right now. The rain had stopped for a while and we needed, uh, frankly, we need a couple hours without rain to get some of the uh, flooding drained through the city. And if we can get that without a heavy rain, and that we don't get another heavy rain, things look pretty good. But right now we have water out of the banks, into some houses along 75th, 78th. We have a lot of streets closed, and we have stoplights not working, and so it's uh, not a real pleasant day right now in Clive. As you can see, it is raining even harder just as we went on a minute ago. Uh, the National Guard has been called in to help you folks out here in Clive, too. That's right. We had the uh, governor with us for a while today, and uh, we put out a call for volunteers for filling sandbags and helping place sandbags along some of the affected residential areas, 75th, 78th Street. And we have, I think, 30 National Guard people uh, with us now, and they're working, and uh, we have some more on standby. Hopefully, we'll be able to make sure as the day uh, evening goes along, if we have heavy rain, that we can provide protection. The Walnut Creek, which is just behind us here, as we can see how flooded it is, is really what's causing all the problems here. If it does rain significantly tonight, uh, what are your efforts going to be? Well, I think our efforts, uh, if we get some time to have the water go down, then we're going to do extensive sandbagging along uh, University Boulevard, University Avenue, particularly in those areas that have been flooded today, to make sure they're not reflooded uh, tonight. Now, as we were just driving over here today, uh, the traffic is very bad, so if you're in a hurry, you're really going to be out of luck because it's going to take you a long time to find your way around the West Des Moines, Des Moines, Clive area today because of the uh, blockades. Uh, basically, what are the areas here in Clive that people need to watch out for? I think particularly 86th Street, which of course is now closed, University Avenue and Boulevard between 73rd and 86th, Swanson Boulevard uh, west of 86th, stoplights are out on Hickman and 86th, Hickman is very crowded, uh, so we would just urge people to avoid this area if they possibly can. Okay, Mayor Gene Maddox, thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully the night won't be as long as the day has been for you. Uh, basically, just to wrap up a little bit, here in Clive, just off of 86th Street, we've got uh, blockage, blockades from 73rd to 86th. Uh, on University and West Des Moines is having a very serious problem as well in the Valley Junction area. They have had to uh, blockade some of the areas there from 63rd Street uh, from 1st there to 4th on Grand Avenue. It is very flooded and uh, much of the West Des Moines Valley Junction area is getting more and more flooded as time goes on. One of our crews was driving through the area around 2, 230 and then just about 4 o'clock it was amazing how those same streets were flooded so much more, uh, even knee deep on a human being. We saw some people wading through there. Many of the shop owners in Valley Junction who own many of the antique stores there, of course many valuables, were clearing those valuables out today. Some people were just uh, sandbagging in front of their storefronts. They decided just to do that. A lot of volunteers in Valley Junction as well, people sandbagging, trying to, of course, prevent a very serious situation. People, of course, losing their livelihood. We will keep you up to date today and tonight throughout as this storm looks like it's coming back in. Reporting live from Clive, Pauletta Longo, Channel 5 News. Gail. Thank you very much, Pauletta. We'll look for you later on in the evening. Now we go to Don Novak, who is standing by live in the Weather Center. Are we going to get a... Don. 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear all your question. I heard, are we going to get, but then you cut out. Can you repeat the question for me, Gail? Are we going to get a respite from the rain? Any hope in sight? No, not, un unfortunately there isn't. We've had a little bit of uh, some breaks in here, but we've already started to get some more thunderstorm activity developing, and their front's still off to the west, and we're in a real dangerous situation. And, and uh, Pauletta was talking about people wading through the uh, running water. You don't want to wade through rapidly running water, nor do you want to drive through it. Water has a tremendous amount of power and can sweep those cars away. So you don't want to cross rapidly moving uh, streams if they're over the roadways and so forth. Turn around and go some other way. Uh, right now, though, I want to talk about a severe thunderstorm uh, warning that has just come out now back to the west in eastern Adair County. It's valid until 530. And that's a severe thunderstorm warning, and it's moving off to the east. Now, this one could catch the southern portion of the Des Moines itself. Uh, might also catch the Van Meter area, and gosh knows they don't need any more rain there. They had almost five inches there this morning, and it continued to rain on and off all morning long. Channel 5 radar is showing a nice bright yellow blob out in uh, Adair County, and that's the one that's moving off toward the east. And uh, that's the one that's caused the uh, warning for, uh, for Adair County. If we can go back, there we are on Channel 5 radar. Uh, thunderstorms through central Iowa, and there's also some very intense thunderstorms off in the extreme eastern part of the state. Look back to the uh, northwest up in South Dakota. I don't know why we keep wanting to go to that uh, uh, severe thunderstorm warning, but if we can go back again to uh, Channel 5 radar, there we go, up in the eastern parts of South Dakota. Already starting to pick up some shower and thunderstorm activity up there, and it looks like uh, we're going to have a long night indeed. Now we can go back to our computer. We've got a flash flood watch posted for uh, all of the state for the rest of the afternoon and all of tonight through tomorrow morning. The grounds are soaked just about anywhere and uh, if we get uh, any more heavy thunderstorms, heavy rains at all, it's gonna cause some rapid runoff and that's why a flash flood watch is posted for the entire state for the remainder of the nighttime hours. In addition, severe thunderstorm watch is posted for southeastern parts of Iowa till 7 p.m. But the bad news is, look at those tornado watches filling in just to our west. 7 p.m. for uh, South Dakota, 9 p.m. in Nebraska, 11 p.m. in uh, portions of Kansas. Once those storms develop out there, they've got to move somewhere, and they're moving off to the east or northeast at about 30 miles per hour. That means that we're in some bad shape because the front is still to the west. That's what's triggering those thunderstorms, and we're going to see some more activity coming in overnight. As far as uh, it goes then, I think uh, heavy rains are going to be a possibility any time for the rest of the night into tomorrow morning. We'd have some serious uh, flash flooding problems. People should stay tuned for updates as the evening wears on. And as far as some severe weather, it looks like we could see some more of that moving in as well. So just gonna be a long night weather-wise. And of course, uh, Pam and I will be here watching it for you and keeping you up to date. Gail, back to you right now. Very well, Don. It looks like a rough night ahead, and the Central Iowa chapter of the American Red Cross has set up three shelters for flooding victims to help them weather the storm. If you need shelter, you can go to the West Des Moines United Methodist Church at 8th and Grand. There are two shelters in Des Moines. The first is the Plymouth Congregational Church at 4126 Ingersoll, and the second shelter is at the Four Mile Community Center at 3711 Easton Boulevard. And as Don just mentioned, Red Cross officials are are urging people to avoid walking around waiting in the flooded areas. Floodwaters can contaminate food and other items and shouldn't be used in any capacity. And make sure to listen to all the warnings put out by disaster service officials and city workers regarding the flooding. More than six inches of torrential rains pelted the Van Meter area along the Raccoon River. The early morning downpour, along with scattered showers this afternoon, brought the Raccoon to record flooding levels, nine feet above flood stage. Van Meter Fire Department, of course, is keeping a close eye on the swelling currents. Early this morning was real bad. Everybody got paged out. Just come down in sheets. It's real bad. And this is the effect that we're seeing now from that rain? Yeah, we had a lot more in town this morning, more than I've ever seen. It's really bad in town this morning. We had stuff going down the streets and everything. Officials say there were no storm-related injuries in the Van Meter area, just a lot of flooded basements. Des Moines residents are still grappling with high nitrate levels, and with today's rain, the problem won't be going away soon. A test of the water from the Des Moines and Raccoon River shows nitrate levels are at 10.4 parts per million. Now, that's down from 11.2 parts million per million on Friday. Des Moines Water Works Director L.D. McMullen says the level will continue to fluctuate. Anyone with children six months old or younger should be using only bottled water. The EPA says only levels below 10 parts per million are safe for the infants to drink. Nitrates are known to cause blue baby syndrome. 
We aren't the only ones battling the ravages of flooding in Ohio. Police dogs are at work looking for the more than 60 people missing after Thursday's flash floods. At least 11 people have died in the flooding, which caught the National Weather Service by surprise. At 10, we'll update you on the situation. Also, we'll bring you the latest on a helicopter crash in Cedar Rapids. The sightseeing chopper went down about 10 seconds after takeoff, killing all three people aboard. The state's Democrats held their convention today. We'll tell you about the challenge put forth by gubernatorial candidate Don Avenson. That plus all the day's news and sports. We'll see you at 10. This has been a Channel 5 News special report. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. On the Cosby Show. Monday at 6 on Channel 5. Great suit. Yeah. Oh, his little flakes. No, dandruff, me? Oh, it can happen to perfect people. Here, just use my shampoo. Head and shoulders. Mm -hmm. But you don't have dandruff. I rest my case. <laughs> Head and shoulders because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. I don't know about you, but I don't like the way some auto service places treat women. I'm not a car expert, but I don't want to be treated like a child. And so many times I feel like the mechanic may be trying to pull one over on me, telling me my car needs something fixed when it probably doesn't. So I go to the Sears Auto Center. They're nice. I get a fair price. I trust them. And my car is ready when promised. That's all I want. And that's what I get at Sears. Mandela, he brought hope to South Africa, inspiration around the world. Now he's coming to America, and his first television interview is with Ted Koppel. Hear what he has to say to our country in an unprecedented town meeting Thursday. David Brinkley here on our This Week program Sunday, the International Conference on AIDS. Is there enough money for research? Too much? A cure in sight? When? Tomorrow night, Sean Connery is James Bond in You Only Live Twice on the ABC Sunday Night Movie. Watch the Weekend Report tonight on most of these ABC stations. This is ABC. Coming up next on the 10 o'clock report, Central Iowa is underwater tonight in some of the worst flooding in 30 years. Workers make some dramatic rescues as residents run from the rising waters. And a fiery chopper crash kills three people in Cedar Rapids. Pam will have up to the minute reports on area flooding and our chances for more rain. And Jeff has a look at weekend sports. The news is next. Stay with us. You're watching the Channel 5 News 10 o'clock report. It is the worst flooding we've seen in decades. Governor Branstad declaring seven Iowa counties disaster areas, four of them in our viewing area. Residents in Polk, Warren, Dallas, and Jasper counties forced from their homes as floodwaters continue to rise. This is what it looked like this afternoon over Polk County in Clive and West Des Moines, some of the hardest hit areas. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gail Nye. It has been a day frustrating to many, unbelievable to others, watching basements fill and businesses damaged. But it has also proven to be a day surprising in another sense. 
hundreds of people lending helping hands. Pauletta Longo and Vince Dementri have been following the rescue efforts all day and join us live now from West Des Moines. Pauletta, Vince? Well, actually, Gail, we're here in West Des Moines where basically now it's just wait and see what happens. They've been very busy here in West Des Moines all day long. Uh, this Valley Junction area of West Des Moines was one of the worst hit areas as far as the flooding goes. 63rd Street from 1st to 4th in West Des Moines off of Grand. We've had areas in Clive. We'll tell you about that a little bit later. Uh, mainly hundreds of uh, residents, not just from West Des Moines, but uh, volunteers from all over. Uh, every gave their efforts to help sandbag. Some filled bags, some loaded the bags along the river banks and such. Many were needed to help close openings in the dike area here off a of railroad. Uh, some shop owners were busy moving out their merchandise as you see here. Some sandbag in front of their storefronts. Others just decided to make the best of the situation and go waiting. Here you see at AK O'Connor's won't be many people smoking there for a while. That was their cigarette machine. Here we have a 4th and Elm Street in West Des Moines, which was amazing. Here you see a family and friends here waiting through it, which actually officials say wasn't exactly one of the most pleasant things to see around the area. Some residents took the time to share some feelings with us today. Are you worried about your merchandise? Of course. That's the reason we're moving it out. We're also moving, well, everything that we can get on the truck and in the vans. We wanted to see if we could help, because we know people down here in the Valley Junction area that we knew we were going to get flooded. Can you sympathize with these people who live here? I sure can. We've had water problems before, and we just need to take care of them. So many volunteers, that they tell me that hundreds, perhaps 600 people, not just from West Des Moines, but from Des Moines as well, who pitched in here around the Valley Junction area today to help sandbag and hopefully make this situation better than what they think is expected. Joining me live now to tell us a little bit more about the situation is Captain John Horner from the West Des Moines Fire Department. Captain, thanks for joining us live. Basically, it's a waiting game now. You were telling me earlier, you just sit and wait. Well, basically, yeah, we understand that the river did crest at Van Meter at approximately 6 p.m. tonight at 22.7 feet, which means that we'll get the crest down here at about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we don't know the extent of the water depth or anything down here yet because you don't know exactly what's falling in between uh, Van Meter and here. So. And that, of course, if there is no more rain, it will get here about 8 o'clock. But if there is more rain, that will make the situation even worse. Well, in effect, that will cause a double crest. It will have to recrest up at Van Meter and come back down here. So uh, that's exactly correct. As I understand the weather situation now, it's pretty uh, uh, scary at this point. Governor Terry Branstad declared seven counties across Iowa as disaster areas. One of them was Polk County, and of course, which is here in West Des Moines. Um, basically, what did the governor uh, offer as far as efforts? Well, I wasn't in the meetings with the governor, but so I don't, I can't answer that question for you. I really don't know. I, he's certainly offered his support, and he's been down here. He's he's watched. He's assisted. He's talked to people. He's you know patted backs, and so he's done a. A uh, nice PR job, I guess, if, if nothing else. But uh, we've still got a lot of work to do down here yet, and uh, and hopefully we'll get it all accomplished before everything gets gets too high. Okay, Captain J John Horner, thank you for joining us live. I will mention that uh, Governor Branstad did, of course, offer the National Guard. The National Guard is, of course, here. Uh, a lot of evacuations today, and to tell us a little bit more about that is uh, Vince Dementri. He was out here today covering the evacuations. Vince, uh, you were there. You were knee-deep and even above that in water. How did that situation go? Yeah, actually, Pauletta, I was waist-deep in some of the water around 63rd and Grand earlier today. If you take a look behind us, you take a look at some of the rescue crews from the West Des Moines Fire Department, the Salvation Army, and some of the National Guard. These are not the type of trucks that can go through waist-high water. And they realized that quickly, and they wasted no time in calling in reinforcements. By late afternoon, it had become very clear that the National Guard was needed. A convoy of trucks made their way through the streets just south of 63rd and Grand in West Des Moines. Hate to see you have to do this. Hey, would you do the same for him? John Heaton doesn't live in this neighborhood, but he decided his help was needed. I heard it on the TV that they, that they needed help, and I decided to come. The process of going door to door was slow at best, but it was the only way to get those trapped out. But not everyone wanted to leave. So with six children, you just don't up and leave your house that easy. So we're just going to wait and stick it out. But with more rains expected overnight, police can't guarantee anyone's safety after the sun goes down. If uh, I lived in the area down here, I would leave. So we want to get as many folks out of here as we can now. Once it gets dark and for folks that have changed their mind, it's going to be much more difficult for us to get back down. Rescue crews were only able to entice about half of the people on this block to leave. 
Those who stayed say they don't want their belongings to just float away. As we mentioned earlier, about half of the people on that block only uh, decided to leave. About the other half uh, decided to stay. And that's not good news because I'll tell you, as the sun has gone down here, Pauletta, uh, darkness is upon us. I would not want to be out in that area right now. It was scary enough just being there and being waist high in the water when the sun was up. I can't imagine what it would be right now with the sun down. And of course, if it rains again, uh, nightmares have just got to be going through those people's heads. Okay, Vince, thank you very much. Now, residents of Clive experienced quite a bit of flooding there as well. Some people even had to leave their homes there because of the flooding. Now, this area that you'll see here on the screen is off of 60, 86th Street, rather, near the 86th Street Bridge. That was flooded when Walnut Creek left its banks. University from 73rd to 86th was blocked off early in the day, which caused a myriad of traffic problems around that area. The lights were out at 86th and Hickman, which didn't help matters at all. Governor Branstad went to Clive to tour the flooded areas with Mayor Gene Maddox. He says the governor saw it as an area that definitely needed some help. We showed him uh, where we had the flood damage and uh, talked to him about our needs for volunteers, and he was uh, quite uh, cooperative, and uh, we do, did get some National Guard people out who have been working uh, security in the area for us and uh, also helping us with our sandbagging effort. So, of course, the people in Clive just waiting as the people here in West Des Moines are. One thing we just found out just a touch ago was that a lot of the state and local officials have been in a meeting for the last hour or so. And uh, we did find out that Des Moines officials have agreed to bank or sandbag the banks over east of 63rd Street, which the folks here in West Des Moines are very happy about because, of course, that's going to help them out in hoping keep the water, keeping the water rather over the levee. Reporting live from Valley Junction in West Des Moines, Pauletta Longo with Vince Dementry. Channel 5 News. A terrific punch dealt to the area, but as we saw back in March, people inadvertently pulled together to help each other out. That's right, Gail. It's really been nice to see all the volunteer efforts here. As we mentioned, hundreds. We probably can't even count all the folks that have been volunteering today. All right. Thank you, Pauletta and Vince. Channel 5 meteorologist Pam Dale has been monitoring our weather situation tonight. She joins us live from the Weather Center. Pam, more rain on the way. More rain, and unfortunately, we have tornado warnings. That's what we want to get to first of all. We have a tornado warning for Appanoose County until 10:15 this evening, and also just issued two tornado warnings. A tornado was reported on the ground near Blakesburg, and this is along the Monroe Wapalo County line. So southeastern Monroe and western Wapalo counties do have a tornado warning in effect until 10:30. I didn't have a chance to get that on the graphic, but for southeastern Monroe and western Wapalo counties until 10:30. On Channel 5 radar, that storm has been fairly stationary down in the southeast corner of the state. Also in northwestern Iowa, some very intense thunderstorms continuing up in those areas. They are moving to the east at 20 miles per hour. Now, we do have warnings for those also. There is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Pocahontas County until 1015. Also, Humboldt County until 1030. Those are severe thunderstorm warnings. Now, we do have a few watches, tornado watches in western Iowa and southeastern Iowa until 1 o'clock, and also just issued a severe thunderstorm watch for much of central Iowa. That will include the Des Moines metro area. That will remain in effect until 4 o'clock Sunday morning. So, of course, we'll have an update just a few minutes later in our show, but otherwise, watch the situation very closely. All right. Thank you very much, Pam. The Red Cross has set up some shelters for people who've been evacuated from their homes or simply need assistance. Here at the United Methodist Church on 8th and Grand in West Des Moines, some 50 people gathered after floods forced them from their homes. Officials expected more people throughout the night as flooding increases. Volunteers say they made some 2,000 sandwiches for all three Des Moines area shelters and for those who spent the day sandbagging. Some elderly people who were evacuated added to the insight to the whole situation. That's scary to me because I've lived right out here for 70 years. You know how much I've been through then. Time and time again we've had to move. I do the best I can with it. I'm, I'm used to a lot of ups and downs, honey. I've had a lot of them. There's room at the West Des Moines United Methodist Church at 8th and Grand. Two other shelters in Des Moines, the Plymouth Congregational Church at 4126 Ingersoll and the Four Mile Community Center at 3711 Easton Boulevard. Red Cross workers are asking us not to go waiting, as tempting as it may be, and pay attention to any notices or warnings posted. Of course, flood water not fit to drink. Keep it away from food if you can. And if that's not enough to grapple with, we're still facing unsafe nitrate levels in Des Moines tap water. A 
access to the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers shows nitrate levels are down to 10.4 parts per million, but that's still above the EPA recommended 10 parts per million. Des Moines Water Works Director L.D. McMullen says the level will continue to fluctuate and that if you have children younger than six months, bottled water is a must. Nitrates are known to cause blue baby syndrome. More than six inches of torrential rain pelted the Van Meter area along the Raccoon River today. The downpour brought the Raccoon to record flooding levels, nine feet above flood stage. And it's the highest it's been since 1958. Of course, the Van Meter Fire Department is keeping a close eye on the rising waters. Early this morning is real bad. Everybody got paged out. Just come down in sheets. It's real bad. And this is the effect that we're seeing now from that rain? Yeah, we had a lot more in town this morning, more than I've ever seen. It was really bad in town this morning. We had stuff rolling down the streets and everything. Officials say there weren't any storm-related injuries in the Van Meter area, just a lot of flooded basements. Not just our area feeling the crunch, the whole state of Iowa is under a flash flood watch. In the Quad Cities, flooding has proven fatal. A small girl drowned when she fell and became lodged in a drainage culvert below the surface. Hundreds of people have been forced from their homes there as well. Bridges washed out. And 25 miles north of the Quad Cities, a washout caused a train to derail, injuring four people. In Ohio, the picture is even more grim. Fifteen people have lost their lives since Thursday's flash flood. Residents of Shadyside never got a warning that they might be in, in serious danger. The severity of the storm caught the National Weather Service by surprise. Police dogs are at work in search of the more than 60 people missing since Thursday. And when we come back, a tragic ending of a trip to the fair. Stay with us. In Cedar Rapids last night, a sightseeing helicopter crashed, killing three people. The chopper had just taken off from some fairgrounds when witnesses say it turned on its side and plummeted to the ground. The pilot and two passengers were killed. No names have been released. The chopper had been giving rides all afternoon at the fairgrounds. Owner of the company said before this crash, his company had a spotless record. Pandale joins us now on quite a night, busy back there in the Weather Center. It has been Something. In incredibly busy ever since 6 o'clock this morning. On and off we've had things. We had a tornado warning this morning at 6 o'clock already, so it's just been pretty wild going <laughs> on, things happening. As for right now, we do have a couple of warnings in the area. We have a tornado warning down in Appanoose County. I guess I should turn on my microphone, that would help. Is it on? <laughs> Is it off? It's off. Now there it's on. All right. We have a tornado warning now for Easton Monroe and Wapalo counties until 10:30. We also have a tornado warning for Appanoose County which has just expired. That expired at 10:15. Otherwise, Eastern Monroe and Wapalo counties until 10:30. A tornado was reported on the ground near Blakesburg. The storms really are not moving very fast. Also, we have severe thunderstorm warnings until 10:30 for Humboldt County. The Pocahontas County warning has already expired. Now on Channel 5 radar, we're seeing a very intense line of thunderstorms in the northwest corner of the state. They are moving to the east at 20 miles per hour. They will be moving into central Iowa. Also in the southwest corner or southeast corner of the state, that's where we are seeing those, those tornado warnings for those southeastern counties. Those are moving very slowly, only to the east at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So those warnings will continue until 10:30 for eastern Monroe and western Wapalo counties. Now we also have watches throughout much of the region, especially in Iowa. Tornado watches for the western part of the state until 1 o'clock and also for south central and southeast Iowa until 1 o'clock. We also have just issued a severe thunderstorm warning, which will include central Iowa. That will remain in, in effect until 4 o'clock. That will also include the Des Moines metro area, Ames, Boone, and other places in central Iowa. A severe thunderstorm watch until 4 o'clock Sunday morning. As for the Almanac, we picked up over 3 inches, 3.66 inches of rain in the Des Moines metro area. Our low temperature this morning dropped down to 65 degrees. Yesterday or today's high has been up to 71. Normals for this date are 62 and 82, so very heavy downpours. We also have that flash flood watch in effect for all of Iowa through the rest of the night. Now nationally, there are a lot of thunderstorms going on farther off to our west. They are already moving into the western part of Iowa, and that's what we're already picking up on Channel 5 radar. Earlier this morning, this batch of thunderstorms rumbled through the central part of the state. There was a tornado warning for the Urbandale area earlier this morning. We don't have any damage reports of that. But in northwestern Iowa, around the Alta area, they had severe tornadoes that produced a lot of damage to farmhouses. That was a little bit earlier this evening in 
in Palo Alto County, they have severe thunderstorm warnings, and those are just going to continue moving eastward as we did see those watches. Now, the culprit is a low pressure center and frontal system, which is just off to our west, that will be passing through Iowa for tomorrow. So it's going to go straight through us by tomorrow afternoon. We should see most of the rainfall ending in Iowa by tomorrow morning. And that's what the regional picture shows, that cold front through the central part of the state by midday. Most of the severe weather will be out ahead of it. So that's what's going to be giving them problems in eastern Iowa, mainly for tomorrow afternoon. So when this frontal system passes us, we will continue to see those strong thunderstorms overnight. And that's why they issued that new severe thunderstorm watch until 4 o'clock for central Iowa. Let's go straight to the forecast then. We do have a flash flood watch and a severe thunderstorm watch for central Iowa tonight. Thunderstorms are likely some of those could be heavy, causing additional problems with the flooding. And also some of those could be severe. Tonight's low down to 69. Then for tomorrow, lingering morning thunderstorms. Otherwise, skies will be partly cloudy. The high will get up to 85 degrees. And for tomorrow night, it's looking much better. Dry, partly cloudy, and 65 for the low. And even on Monday, should be mostly dry with a partly cloudy sky, but very warm. The high again up around 87 degrees. So mm. warm and dry weather will help a whole lot. But unfortunately, tonight we're going to go through another round of thunderstorms. And we'll stay here as long as we need to, keeping you updated to what's going on. But a literal silver lining in the clouds. You bet. We hope so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pam. Well, Jeff's on deck now and not ideal weather for golf here, but <laughs> in some parts of the world. Chicago, at least. The U.S. Open will have highlights of that. Plus, we'll tell you about Mike Tyson's comeback next. With three down and one round to go, there are some new faces on top of the leaderboard at the U.S. Open. Billy Ray Brown fired a 300 par 69, including a nice birdie on the 13th to take a share of the lead. This is Mike Donald. He's also tied at the top. Look at the backspin on his approach shot on the 14th hole. Well, it was a tough day for the Simpsons. Yesterday's leader, Tim Simpson, hit this long putt on 14, but he had to save par, and he gets it. Well, Scott Simpson, though, had more problems. He lost five strokes on the final four holes, all sorts of problems on the beach. This was on the 17th hole. He ended up taking a triple bogey. Well, two-time defending champion Curtis Strange is still within striking distance for his third win in a row. He certainly read the break right on this putt. Watch it go in, and the birdie was chirping loudly. After three rounds, here's how they stack up. It's Billy Ray Brown and Mike Donald on top. One stroke behind is Tim Simpson, Mark Brooks, Jeff Sluman, and Larry Nelson. And then two shots off the pace is Curtis Strange, Fuzzy Zeller, and four others. And the Golden Bear, Jack Nicklaus, he is still in the hunt. He's only four shots off the pace at three under 213. He may weigh 263 pounds, but George Foreman is now 22-0 with 21 knockouts since coming out of retirement. Tonight in Las Vegas, Foreman taking on Adelson Rodriguez. One punch and it's over. This one only lasted two rounds. Foreman delivers the knockout punch and the knees buckled. The big match of the night, though, is now over as well. Mike Tyson making his first fight since uh, losing the title to Buster Douglas in Tokyo. Tyson, with an overhand right in the first round, knocks out his opponent, Henry Tillman. And Mike Tyson is now back on the road to recovery, as they say. Well, let's go on to baseball scores tonight. First of all, in the American League, it was the Tigers over the Angels 6-2. The Red Sox got past the Orioles 6-3. Cleveland uh, defeated Milwaukee by a score of 10-9. In the 10th inning, Toronto and New York are tied at one apiece. In the second, no score between the Rangers and the Mariners. Nolan Ryan is not going to get a no-hitter in this one. He has already given one up. And the Royals got past the Twins by a score of 5-3. Moving on to the National League scoreboard, we have the Dodgers over the Padres 5-2. The Giants shut out the Braves 7-0. It was the Reds over the Astros 6-2. Pittsburgh over New York 11-6. And the Cardinals defeated the Expos by a score of 5-3. The I-Cubs on the road tonight at Columbus, and they were losers by a score of 8-2. And one final, one final story here. We have the twin trifecta out of Prairie Meadows. Uh -huh. One individual won it tonight. That must have been a sloppy track. $24,000 <laughs> on the twin trifecta. Oh. One happy better out Good at Prairie Meadows tonight. Is. I'm waiting for Foreman and Tyson, too. That may be around the Two corner. Favorites. All right. Thank you, Jeff. When we come back, we'll take you live again to West Des Moines, where Paula and Vince will update you on the flooding in the metro area, and Pam will have the latest on our weather. Stay with us. The National Weather Service has just issued a tornado warning effective uh, until 1045 tonight for the people in the following counties. Northeast Appanoose, Southeast Monroe, Southwest Wapolo, and Northeast Davis. Of course, Pam Dale will be along in a while to update us on that. Meanwhile, our Paulette Longo and Vince Dementri have been out covering the widespread flooding in the metro area. They join us live with the latest. Paulette and Vince? Well, Gail, we're still here at 5th and Railroad in uh, Valley Junction in West Des Moines. We've got a bit of an updated situation now. We're going to go to uh, Captain 
Captain Randy Bracton, Chief Randy Bracton, rather. He is the fire chief here in West Des Moines, also the Civil Defense Director. Chief, you just got out of a meeting for after a couple of hours today. Basically, where do you stand at this point? Well, we've uh, discussed with Des Moines uh, a problem east of uh, 63rd Street, and we are now uh, moving our efforts to east of 63rd, and we're building a levee up through 62nd Street to uh, keep the waters from coming back in from the Des Moines side. And that is, of course, Des Moines and West Des Moines working together on that. Yes, we uh, have Des Moines bringing sand and bags, and, and I moved all of our volunteers and fire department down in that area to help get this finished uh, so that we can uh, hopefully get the last link before this weather sets in that's supposed to hit here in the next hour or two. Chief, obviously, in the next couple of hours, are going to be telling exactly what you do. If it does decide to start to rain once again, how is that going to change your plans? Well, we're just we're going to have to keep with our plans the way they are uh, and keep watching the river. Uh, we've got the guard here as surveillance uh, along with the fire department. We have a Mackinich company that's uh, going to uh, immediately start hauling dirt to raise the dike if we have to get it higher. And uh, we've made a lot of preparations, but uh, this rain really could uh, cause us some problems. They're talking about 50 mile an hour winds, I understand now, and one to three inches of rain. So it's going to be tough. Now, obviously, with darkness upon us, it's got to make that job much more difficult. Yes, uh, we'll know uh, come four o'clock in the morning, I'm afraid. Now, you're still looking for volunteers, of course, and just because it's nightfall, that doesn't mean that the volunteer efforts stop. That's correct. We've uh, had uh, just a tremendous uh, response with the volunteers, and uh, I would like to see some more show up if we could get some more just for a few, uh, an hour or two, and we'll be finished uh, if they could meet.